I just played what is potentially the best Pokemon experience I had in 2023, and yes, I am including Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, because unlike those games, this one has amazing new regional forms, the return of mega evolutions, crazy battles, even crazier characters, two evil teams, dirty jokes, a truly gripping story, full of twists, and a sudden kern that can defeat God itself. But hold up, rewind. Let's start this tale from the very beginning, because this is Pokemon Myth. We start our journey in a pretty typical Pokemon fashion. After choosing what flavor of Hot Topic Kid we want it to be, we hear a breaking news report. Breaking news? This region is experiencing the worst increase in warm weather and climate change yet. But who cares? It's time for us to choose our starter Pokemon, or not. We just get an Eevee, but hey, you know what? I'm not complaining, especially because in Pokemon Myth, there is now an Eeveelution for every single type, so we're really gonna have a lot of fun choosing which flavor we want. And as usual, we have to name our starter chat, since you all are my partner and I love you. After playing with the Mill Tanks outside, it's time to meet our first of several rivals we'll have throughout the Mythen region, Marcus. Hello, I'm Marcus, by the way. I'm the son of this region's professor. And needless to say, he's a little hyperactive. What do you say, you up for a challenge? Perfect, let's get this show on the road. We did not say a single goddamn word. This man came up to us, knocked us over with his bird, had a whole one-sided conversation, and now we're fighting. You know what, bring it. For our hard-fought victory, Marcus says his father, Professor Bree, will give us a Pokedex. If only he knew how to give us goddamn directions. We should head towards the lab. If you need help getting there, just look for a big tan building. Am I tripping? After exploring the town for a bit and even admiring a mysterious creature that's out of our reach, eventually we find our way to Professor Bree's lab and he seems like a kind and smart person, despite his vibrating extrovert of a son. Marcus here told me that you were interested in helping me on my quest of studying all myth and Pokemon. We really weren't. He just kind of threw that at us. No offense to Marcus's clear case of ADHD, but we never really agreed to be an unpaid intern. In fact, I don't think I've actually spoken a word to Marcus, but if you're just handing out Pokedexes, I mean, I'll take it. Free things given to me by strangers are always good, and you should always trust them. Professor Bree explains that the purpose of our journey is to learn more about the Mythen region, the Pokemon that reside within it, and how both modern problems and the region's rich history will affect them. He also suggests that the best way to do this would be to battle all eight gym leader... Oh, and Marcus already ran off. He's always so impatient. I didn't even finish talking. We have not said a word to him. And apparently we have an unpaid internship. That's enough, Marcus. I've used up all of my patience. You're going on my shit list. The last thing Professor Bree tells us is to keep an eye out for a woman named Vanilla, because not only is she the champion of this region, she's also like a daughter to him, as he gave her an Eevee just like we have. But we're ready to finally officially start our Pokemon journey, where we can travel the land, battle brand new Pokemon, and meet new people, and even get insulted by inanimate objects. Great magical orb, will Nurse Joy ever love me? The orb cracks. You didn't have to do me like that. Putting our pride back together, it was time to catch our very first Pokemon in the Mythen region, and I was excited. I knew coming into Pokemon Myth that there were new forms of beloved Pokemon, gorgeous new original Pokemon, and even Pokemon that had brand new typings like Sound and Light. So I foolishly may have made a promise to my chat that I wasn't willing to keep. Chat, I'm gonna catch the first Pokemon we see, and it's gonna be amazing. And it's a Sunkern. Okay, I was a little disappointed by our first party member, but chat had fallen in love with Little Mist. So reluctantly, I kept them in the team. It's not like I had any better options, right? I mean, I'll probably replace them with a cooler Pokemon later on. And new Pokemon there were. Unlike a lot of Pokemon fan games where the new Pokemon and regional forms are fairly hard to find, in Pokemon Myth they are everywhere. So we get to catch two amazing new friendos, Sachi the Swove and this beautiful, gorgeous electric Pidgey we named Pox. 
Most importantly though, we get a Raiolu, an adorable, ground and ghost type Raiolu we lovingly named Kyle. May his name ring out for generations. Uh, oh, oh yeah, I should probably mention I do name all of my Pokemon after subscribers in my live stream chat, so make sure you subscribe so you can catch my next one and maybe even be a Pokemon in my next video. Anyways, Marcus is here, and he's here to invite us on a brand new adventure, the Sewer System. Hooray! And even though he promised we would find some cool new Pokemon, I really didn't find anything worthwhile. Meanwhile, he finds a shiny Zubat, and it's for us to share, right? Right? Well, how about we make a deal? Marcus, let me pitch you on something. You don't want that shiny Zubat. It's a gross puke color. You can give the Zubat to me, and in return, I will give you the first Pokemon I ever caught. Their name is Mist, <laughs> and hear me out, <laughs> they're capable of taking a hit or two. After a good flaming from chat for daring to threaten their darling CD boy, and a regular drowsy jump scare, we entered our next village, and oh, is Marcus here again telling us that before we fight the first gym, we should go Spelunky in the cave for new Pokemon? Man, I don't think we're friends here. We've known each other for like 15 minutes. Before we actually head into the cave to go spelunking, Marcus wants to battle, and his first Pokemon is... the Shiny Zubat. Dude, if I get swept by a Shiny Zubat, I will never emotionally recover from this. Don't poison me! You just had to brag about having a Shiny, huh? Well, I'll show you. I'll show all of you. Luckily, the rest of this battle is carried by our new friends, and even luckier is that we get to meet the villains of this game, who have to be some of my absolute favorites. We're members of Team Astra. Prepare for devastation greater than the stars. Prepare for music better than the best of any bars. All Pokemon are our right and our dreams. The only thing you're destined to is nightmares and screams. Regina. Rivera. Team Astra is destined to control the world and everything in between. And we're going to... Shut the fuck up, you guys are weird. <laughs> Marcus, let them cook! If only they had the same battling skills as they did for freestyle rapping. Because three Magnemites? It's time for the Kyle Sweep! <laughs> Seemed like Marcus was as fortunate in his battle though, but it's okay. We'll win the battle and stop Team Astra from catching rare Pokemon in the caves? Hold up, that sounds an awful like what we were gonna do. Anyway, let's not think about the morality of the Pokemon universe and instead head straight for our first gym. The puzzle here involves fighting some random fire type Pokemon in a library, which personally feels like a huge fire hazard, but hey. I'm not a gym leader, so what do I know? We do take the chance to catch a Dark and Fire Mareep though. It's a cutie and I named her Ivy. Our plan here is to mostly rely on Kyle since the gym leader is a fire type and well, Kyle is ground, it's early Pokemon. Type advantage usually wins, so it's time for a Kyle Swoop. Oh, he lost to the first Pokemon. Well, Pox finishes the Kate lid off, but our game plan is now out the window, and to make things worse, the next Pokemon is a damn Torkoal, which is like a monster in every single game. We needed a game plan, and luckily, I had one. You know what? I may dunk on you often, but we'll send him in! Let's go, Mist! I would show chat that this silly little seedy Sunkern was useless, and I promised them if Mist couldn't take down Torkoal, I would box it in a heartbeat. Y you know, I give Mist a lot of slack because they can't even hit a fucking leech seed! Oh wait, you know what? You know what? I'll take it! <laughs> You just used Explosion to take down our Sunkern? <laughs> Mist, salute. Oh, okay then. We used the rest of our four Pokemon to take down a Growlithe, and just like that, we've somehow won our very first gym badge. 
thanks to missed the sun current, I guess. And chat was elated. How could Moop ever think about boxing what is clearly the strongest Pokemon in our party? But enough of that. Hey, look, a new rival just dropped. Oh, how rude of me not to introduce myself. I'm Ivy. Oh, that's the name of our Mareep. Huh. Now, even though Ivy stole our Mareep's name, she's actually pretty chill, and she even asked us to battle instead of just, you know, throwing her Pokemon at us, which puts her leagues above Marcus, but it still doesn't prepare us for the Kyle sweep. She also says that she's an assistant at Infusion Incorporated, and if we ever meet again, she promises us an in at the company. The rest of the route isn't all that interesting. We battle a trainer who has a creepy metal squirtle, but the true excitement is at the end of the route, where we once again have a chance to fight Team Astra and meet another rival, Hope. You better give my notebooks back. Shut it, nerd. These notes are very absurd. My notes are not worth stealing. Give them back. Not a chance. You work for Infusion Inc. Um, can you lend me a hand? Oh no, it's that kid that we were warned about. Luckily, this is a double battle, which is the Pokemon equivalent of a free pass. We did succeed in saving Hope, and hey, Pox even evolved, which is really awesome. We finally managed to get to the next town where we're met with even more rhyming Team Astro members. The one that looks like Hatsune Miku is named Pixie, and the one that looks like one of the last surviving Molgoth is named Spectre. Wow, I wonder what Pokemon types they use. Unfortunately, they heard me making fun of them and stuck some ninjas on us that we beat fairly quickly. Look at him, he's just a little fella. The town we're in seems pretty nice, but little did we know that a war was about to break out in my chat. Because soon a random woman gave us a new Pokemon. Pokemon a Slinky, a water and dragon serpent we named JB. Now, the new Pokemon itself was pretty cool and I definitely wanted to add it to the team, but that also means we have to box one of our six Pokemon, and my chat could not agree on who to box. I suggest that we box Miss the Sunkern, but my chat riots. A group of Sunkern cultists claim that, no, Sunkern carried the first gym. But we want to see new Pokemon, detractor shot back. A poll was put up and was nearly evenly split. No matter who we boxed, people would be upset. Sunkern was tearing us apart until a saint descended, Sachi. Our lovely bird Pokemon, a swove, rather the chatter she was named after, had spoken. Fear not, ye faithful, for I will sacrifice myself so that all will be satisfied. Live on and enjoy. Anyways, they basically gave us their blessing to box the Pokemon that they were named after, so hey, Sunkern lives to see another day. Oh, and look, it's Ivy again. She tells us about Infusion Ink, and that with the stones they mine from the ground, Pokemon can get extra stab typing in a gimmick called Infusion, which I completely forgot to use going forward. But hey, I'll happily kick a few scientists' ass, evolve JB into an even bigger water dragon serpent, and reunite with Professor Bree. What's that? A cool new drill? It could probably drill through even the toughest stone, and it would be really easy to steal? Reminds you of your friends at Team Magma and their plot to save the world? Don't you mean destroy it? Silly Professor Bree! <laughs> You're such a good guy. Professor Bree also tells us about Team Corrupt, a group intent on saving the environment. You must agree that these machines are lovely, perhaps strong enough to drill through even the toughest stone? Wow, I'm sure Team Corrupt truly are the good guys they claim to be. They need to fire their brand manager. Seems I'm needed elsewhere. You stay safe, okay? Tell Marcus that I'd like to speak to him. He's been away for quite a while. Anyway, see a totally not suspicious professor. And now let's meet the rest of the nice town people. Hello, are you Betty? Hello, Betty. This is my ranch. I raise Miltank to give out to all the residents of Mythen. Only Miltank? No Tauros? Oh, of course. You can't milk a Tauros. You seem confused by the fact that you can't milk a Tauros. How should I put this? Milking a Tauros gets you something that isn't milk. <laughs> Never mind, that's enough from nice town people. Anyways, after we battle Ivy, which was fairly easy, we run into our favorite or least favorite caffeinated child, Marcus. Apparently he was bragging so much about his shiny Zubat that some random grunts just up and stole it. Honestly, it serves him right, but we do owe his dad a lot, so I guess we'll get it back from <gasps> Team Corrupt. Could they be the villains? Who could have seen this coming? 
We reluctantly go through the next few double battles with Marcus, and it's made all worth it because we get to see two new amazing fire type Pokemon. First off, a fire type Zoroa, and second off, a ghost and fire type Scyther. Gimme, 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 gimme. Okay, well, we don't get them now, but good for you, Marcus. At least you got your shiny back. What's that, Marcus? You're starting to think Team Corrupt may not be the good guys they say they are? You're telling me Team Corrupt isn't an organization of good? Who would have guessed? Really quick on the upkeep this one, really showing your dad's intelligence. Oh, hey, who's this, a new rival? I'm Vanilla, the Pokemon League champion of the Mythen region. Oh, it's Vanilla, the champion of this region. You know, I don't know why so many important people seem to be swarming us like bees. I have one gym badge, a sun current I don't even like, an Eevee named Chat, and a dream to conquer the Pokemon League. For all, it really doesn't feel that impressive and y'all keep halting my progress. But she mentions that she's a friend of our brother. I guess I have one of those. And she even invites us to find the ancient stomp. Which does things, probably. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I, th I thought the ancient stump was like an innuendo or something. This is the ancient stump. Some people say that many mythical Pokemon such as Mew, Celebi, and Shaman used to live here. It was once a giant but very skinny tree. However, a few years ago it tragically burnt down. Sorry, but sometimes I wish I could go back in time and fix things. Make everything right. Here, take this. Hey, cut. Getting cut is nice, but I could have done without the history lesson. At least it allows us to get to the next town, which has this sick-ass Lugia statue, and of course, the second gym. We were ready to fight the Ice-type gym leader, but Chat had another demand. We release the seed. Fine, I'll, I'll lead with Miss the Sun Curtain. And really, that didn't last long. We got to use Razor Leaf once and immediately switch them out so Ivy could sweep, because, you know, fire types. But Chat counted it as a win for them. In their eyes, Mist had somehow swept and it was a total victory. Which is, I would love to know what kind of mental gymnastics are going on in their head. But after Marcus challenged us to another battle, jumping us right outside the gym, which, you know, kind of checks out for his rude little ass, it was time for another run-in with Team Astra, which is led by this guy, Zeru. The double battle was pretty easy, and he kept droning on about how we were a worthy opponent and honor and something, but but who cares? We got to meet a Whalen, the cutest little fella, and I need one now. We won the double battle, we insulted our rival. You don't think I'm weak? Yes. Oh, well, I'll try my best to regain my strength. And we make it to the next town, where we get to fight, you guessed it, another rival. This time, uh, her name is Lily, um, no, not that one, the CEO of Infusion Inc., the company that Hope and Ivy work for. She tells us that she's been forced to take the company over by her dad, but her true passion is Pokemon battling, but I'm sorry, Lily, you have to go on the shit list. Not because you're bad at battling and we beat you, but because you're a CEO little Nepo baby, and no one loves eating the rich more than the masses. So, fueled by the revolution, chat evolves into a gorgeous ghost-type evolution named Spectreon. What's that boy? Professor Breeze in trouble? Taken by some thugs under the city? But we actually like our totally not evil professor. We'll rush right there without any distra- Ooh, a flaming Zoroa. I mean, of course, with new Pokemon like Zoroa and even Waylon, which was a rare sound type, there come some tough decisions. Boxing Ivy for our new fire type Zoroa, and most notably, do we box Sunkern? Luckily, this time, I had come prepared to battle. Okay, chat, let's figure this out. The topic of today's debate, should we keep Mist in the party? A lowly Sunkern. I am taking the stance of no, we don't need them. There are cooler Pokemon. Even if it's not Waylon, we could keep Ivy. We could get one of the other cool new Pokemon that are introduced in this game versus Sunkern, quite literally one of the weakest Pokemon in this game. And I think that's reasonable. Now chat, what say you to all of this? What are your arguments for me that we keep this thing, this, keep this Pokemon? You see him? Look at that dumb little face. It's not about power, it's about the message. Mist stays 
Everyone, allow me to speak. Sunkern is adorable, and we need a grass type, and when it evolves, it's pretty decent. But that's the thing! When it evolves, it is decent. And it's just decent, it's not even good. Mist has been sweeping a lot recently? No, they haven't! Alas, Mist would continue to plague this party, but I still needed something to take my rage out on. <sighs> is that a shiny regional Ryolu? Now... Most trainers would catch the new shiny Ryolu and replace Kyle with it, but an even wiser trainer is Petty. Sure would be a shame. <laughs> That's what you get, chat. You force me to keep a sun kern in the party. That's what you get. You all may be mad because I wasted a shiny, but you wanna know who appreciates my loyalty? Kyle. So much so that he evolved. Something missed would never do for us. Wait a second, weren't we doing something? Oh yeah, we needed to rescue Professor Bree from <gasps> Team Corrupt or not because Professor Bree is the leader of Team Corrupt. Who could have seen this coming? Professor Bree explains that he founded Team Corrupt to solve the current climate change issues plaguing the Mythen region. But as their efforts yielded absolutely no results, they were forced to take more drastic measures, such as giving children Pokedexes? Crime? Stealing your own kid's shiny Zubat? I don't know, man, this didn't seem like a great plan. But hey, they have a new plan. Harness the power of a legendary Pokemon to fix the environment by destroying a volcano. Now, I don't know what kind of mental gymnastics Bree is doing, somehow outdoing our own chat, but it kind of sounds like we need to stop that. Oh, also Lily is here, and what the hell is that? Hold up, y'all, a new legendary Pokemon just dropped this is Fenelpha, the legendary volcano Pokemon of the Mythen region, and they're here and angry because, you know, Team Corrupt is trying to blow up their home. It's pretty upset and planning to erupt every volcano in the region, which between you and me sounds pretty counterintuitive to Team Corrupt's goal of solving climate change, but never fear, Vanilla the Champion is here. And holy crap, with a Deoxys and a shiny Altaria? I see how it is. I'm sorry, I just can't find myself to trust someone with a shiny Pokemon. In the end, Vanilla manages to tame the volcanic being and we confront Professor Bree. Um, Vanilla, did you know Pokemon are causing global warming? What do you mean I need to have a source for that? I do my own research, ma'am. Now, you may be thinking, if Team Corrupt thinks Pokemon are causing global warming, and Vanilla has captured the legendary volcano Pokemon, that they would be satisfied. Nope, they seem to still want to destroy the volcano. Okay, wait, so you're like, we need to protect the environment. To do that, we must destroy nature. Okay, I'm beginning to pick up your plan now. So Vanilla, it's up to you, the champion of the region, to stop this terror. Oh, no, you want me to fight them? Not you, the woman with two legendary Pokemon? What about Lily, the CEO? No, me? Ma'am, I have two gym badges. What the hell am I even doing here? Bree's team is full of heavy hitters. A huge power boosted Azumarill, a poison type evolution called Toxion, a freaking Mega Porygon Z, and even that ghost type Scyther I want. It's a huge struggle, but between Pox, JB, Kyle, and Chat, we were able to pull through, and Chat claimed it was another missed sweep. Unfortunately though, before we could arrest Team Corrupt, they teleported away. Much to Vanilla and Lily's concern, but I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, I'm not too threatened. I just want to float the idea that if a trainer with two gym badges could beat them, they probably aren't the biggest threat in the world. At this rate, even Mist will be able to beat Bree. The third gym is an electric type, and we have a Kyle, so hey, that's three gym badges. So it's time for us to train up, evolve some of our Pokemon, get a cameo from my Unovan boyfriend, yeah, I said it, he's mine, hands off, and move on to get our next gym. Oh, what's this voice in my head? Huh, could that be plot? 
I guess it's time for my favorite game. Is this plot or an underlying mental condition I should seek professional help for? Oh well, let's just ignore it and move on to the next town. Actually, the first town. We've gone in a whole big circle, see? And to our surprise, we see Professor Bree, once again talking to Marcus and Vanilla. Seems like Marcus is pretty upset his dad's evil, and Vanilla thinks of him as a father as well, so they kind of want some answers. Marcus decided to immediately bail, or maybe there was a butterfly or something that distracted him, you can never tell. Anyway, Bree took the opportunity to flee into his lab, and despite Vanilla literally running into the lab directly after Bree, she somehow got lost? How? It's not like this place is particularly complicated, so I guess it's once again up to us to stop the professor's evil plans, and instead, Bree has a proposal. Moop, join forces with me. Together we can become unstoppable. My plan is to capture the three legendary Mythen Guardians, and with their power, I'll be able to create a perfect world of sunlight and habitat for all Pokemon. Which would be a great deal, because, you know, I'm all about going green. If it didn't come from the guy who tried to, you know, destroy a volcano and then lost to a kid with two gym badges. Sorry, man, I'm going to take my chances writing solo. That's menace behavior. Bree runs off to the highest peaks of the region to attack the shrines of the Myth and Guardians and hopefully capture them, so I give chase. His team corrupt grunts have built a machine to locate the Myth and Legendary Pokemon, so I guess it's battle time once again. The second battle with Bree is even easier than the first. I mean, we have 50% more gym badges. The man's a total pushover, with his only real team change being that he has a flaming cleavor, which is admittedly pretty sick. But that's not enough to stop us from steamrolling him a second time. And how will we stop the machine from luring out the legendary Pokemon? I mean, we, we kind of just sort of walked up and flipped the switch. None of these actual adults stopped us from doing it, so I guess we'll take the W. Oh, and if you were wondering, Vanilla showed up again, late as usual, seeing as me and Hope have already beaten everyone to a pulp. Wait, don't chase them, Vanilla says. We should wait for backup. They could be dangerous. What backup? Vanilla, you're the champion. Who's your backup? We already beat their leader half to death. She reveals that she is torn, because Professor Bree was like a father to her, and it just tears her up to see him do such heinous things. Vanilla, that sucks and all. I'm pretty sure I'm literally 12 though and just want my fourth gym badge, so bye. Off to Maycrop Town, which may not seem exciting at first. I mean, it's pretty empty, but pretty soon we discover that we can buy Mega Stones here. Right now, the only Pokemon that we have that can Mega Evolve are Ivy and Kyle. And while Kyle gets ripped out of his goddamn mind with an extra set of arms, the next gym is water. And like most people named Kyle, he hates bathing. We also catch a fire ghost type Scyther, but that's not gonna help much either. If only we had some unused potential, some great Pokemon that has been in our party the whole time. Oh, it's finally here. The Mist Sweep. You know, chat, I'm a big enough man to admit when I was wrong. <laughs> but somehow, reviving Miss was the play. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. The Miss sweep was in fact real. I had no choice. I had to bite my own words and become a believer. And for my faith, in the Great Mist, I was rewarded with several boons. The first and is an adorable electric ghost sphere named Meatball. We managed to evolve Pox into a Pidgeot that could now mega evolve. Cordell, the Scyther, turned into a Scizor, unlocking amazing mega evolutions for both of them. But the greatest power boost came from the hero of this story. The little Sunkern himself, Mist, had ascended into his final form. Who could stand in their way now?
Certainly not the coward Marcus, who pled on his knees to forgive him because he had abandoned us when we had to confront Professor Bree. His puny team can't touch us in a battle, not even with his new shiny mega crowbat. And after witnessing our strength from Lord Mist, Marcus invites us to a meeting with most of our rivals, Vanilla, Lily, and Ivy. They were formulating a plan to destroy Professor Bree and Team Corrupt, and after Mist humiliated the non-believers in a double battle, we agreed to help with their plan. I don't know where Hope is, because she's kind of been the rival that's been helping us the most fight Team Corrupt, but hey, we have a pretty strong army on our own. The three legendary Pokemon, Fenroar, Friend Knight, and Ligari, have the power over time, and so Professor Bree plans to use them to turn back time and stop humans from ever coming to the Mythen region. But that could have disastrous effects on our timeline, you know, the whole Butterfree effect. We can't allow it to happen. We know that Bree plans to capture two of them first, so our group splits up. Vanilla, Marcus, and Ivy in one group, and me and Lily in the other. Our duo is sent to the icy peaks of Mount Maycrop, but we're too late. Professor Bree has already captured the legendary Pokemon and was lying in wait with the- Oh, oh hold up, is that a Genesect? That's a bit out of our league, and sure enough, neither Lily or I are able to move. So when Vanilla finally shows up to save us, oh my god, she actually did something, congrats Vanilla, you're off the shit list. Or maybe not, because Vanilla gets one shot by a Genesect. Ma'am, you are the champion of the region, you have two legendary Pokemon, is that Deoxys just for show? Never mind, you're back on the list. I guess it's up to us to fight Professor Bree again, and I'll admit this was a struggle, partly because I didn't expect a boss battle, so our current team is not the best. We have an unevolved Celio, a 10 levels under Ampharos, and an egg. And Professor Bree actually came to play. Chat barely takes down their freaking Genesect before Mist has to step in and take down Mega Porygon Z. To top it off, Professor Bree also brought a Mega Jirachi! What is going on? But we have something he doesn't. Disposable income. Through the powers of potion stalling and revives, we managed to come out victorious. But it's still not enough because Professor Bree teleports away. Someone remind me to bring like handcuffs or something next time we fight this guy. We can't just keep beating him and letting him run. And even though we had defeated him, we didn't get out without wounds. The last thing I see before I lose consciousness is a blizzard barreling towards all of us. Several days later, we woke up in our mom's house, barely surviving from doing Vanilla's job. And even though we had defeated Professor Bree, he had still gotten away and no one knows where he is. The legendary Pokemon were still in danger. We needed to get stronger, and that can start with getting new Pokemon. A psychic type Larvesta, Luna, who's even shiny. They may not be ready for battle yet, but later down the line, they'll be so useful. For now though, we fully evolved Meatball, and they're ready to rumble. Ever since our battle with Bree, Lily has been missing in action, and both Marcus and Ivy were too depressed after their loss. So our new strike force to stop Team Corrupt consisted of ourselves, Vanilla, and Hope. We had to go into battle quickly, or else we'd never be able to stop them from getting the legendary Pokemon. Hope and I take care of two of their commanders, while Vanilla tries her best to defeat Bree, and well, you know how Vanilla is. She loses, you know, ooh, that's my champion. Soon enough, it's our turn to fight, and now we're actually ready. Kyle mega evolves and takes out Toxion with a single earthquake. Mist one hits their Swampert, and surprisingly, Genesect is taken out by a single flamethrower from Pox the Pidgeot. Actually, Kyle is able to sweep the rest of Bree's Pokemon, includes Mega Jirachi. Vanilla, how are you the champion? I'm constantly blown away by your incompetence. We do learn that the actual reason Bree wants the three myth and Pokemon isn't to time travel, but instead to draw out Arceus. This is like your third evil plan, my dude. Take the L. And now that he has everything he needs, he's just going to walk away. Did no one bring handcuffs like I asked? Why the hell are we having these battles if we're just gonna let him walk away, Vanilla? I may be the champion, but clearly I don't deserve that title. Yeah! Seems like I'm always relying on Moot to help me. Yeah! Thank you! Maybe call your mom! That's what friends are for. I just wish I could do more. I feel like I'm not at my strongest. I hope for your sake you're not. I'm not sure I'll be much more help 
I know it's my job to protect the region as champion. I'm not sure I'm capable of doing that. Don't make me suck some sense into you. You're not champion for nothing. It kind of feels like she is, though. Like, am I tripping? They did not make Vanilla seem very strong in this game. You know what? I'm done. This is not my problem anymore. I have a mission. Today, we are going to start blowing through some gyms because we've been doing nothing but fight evil teams. After dropping Ivy like concrete in the ocean despite her having a mellow Weta now, which just feels unfair, we fight the ground type gym leader, which ends up being a double battle, and his mega cradily is pretty awesome, but isn't enough to destroy our Pox and Kyle tag team duo. What can I say? Powerful flying types and earthquake just run rampant in double battles. Now we can finally make our way towards gym num- God damn it! Is this an intervention? Nope. We've just found a cell phone that has messages from Professor Bree about his new evil plan. Luckily, the legendary Pokemon are still sending us convenient psychic SOS messages and we know exactly where to go to stop them. Tr- Not again. Our home. It's destroyed. We no longer feel safe. We must run. Return our charms. Return what belongs to us. Stop him. He's hurting us. He's hurting our home. Hey, Moop, can you hear me? Well, thank goodness what happened. I think we need to see a doctor, man. We can't stop just hearing voices. They spoke to you. Did they? Fenror, Frenite, and Ligari. The Pokemon that Bree captured. That can only mean one thing. There's all kinds of stories of these Pokemon choosing the most powerful trainers in the region to protect them in their home. He must be worthy of that title. Vanilla. Okay. I don't want to seem rude. You are the worst Pokemon champion I've ever heard of. Or we can just ignore that and head to our next gym. Before that though, we have another battle with Hope and she pretty much sums up every single Pokemon rival relationship. What's up, how am I feeling? You know, I'm glad you didn't give up when life got tough, or else I wouldn't be able to finish my journey with you. The friendship you and I have together is something I always cherish, even if we barely see each other. We're more like warm acquaintances, Hope. I don't know what Hope has been doing recently, but her new team is cooking. Not only does she have a shiny Mega Absol that set my soul ablaze. You have a shiny Absol? Now, if there's one thing I know how to do, it's to kill shiny Pokemon. But she also has a goddamn Lunala. Why does every rival have a goddamn legendary Pokemon? Where's mine? Oh, Moongeist Beam, super effective. Yeah, stop bragging, goddammit. Heck, this chick even has a Rotob and a Planeon. By the way, you can't just bring your E to a salon and call it an evolution, dammit. But hey, we win just in time for a sound type gym. Now, I don't know if this is a hot take or not, but I'm not the biggest fan of new Pokemon types in fan games. It's not a knock on Pokemon Myth, because I hope I've made it clear how much I adore this game, but it always feels like an unnecessary addition that distances a fan game from the Pokemon franchise in general. Not to mention, adding sound and light types is a bit too much for me, because at this point, I've put like 12 hours into Pokemon Myth, I've had an amazing time, but gun to my head, I cannot tell you what is super effective against sound types. So, the gym was a bit of a struggle, but I will say the designs are awesome. I mean, this regional labyrinth goes dummy hard. In the battle, I did discover that ground was super effective against sound, so our strategy just became spamming Earthquake over and over again, which caused a little trouble when we have to go up against an ice sound type Noivern where Kyle was outsped and learned that sound was actually super effective against fire. But the goat, Mist, is still here to body whatever a bind she is, and we revive Kyle to take care of another new evolution. I guess since we have two new gym badges, we can get back to saving the world. But audience, strap in. The plot is about to have more twists than Space Mountain. First off, we meet up with Ivy, who is mourning on the coast, because apparently, <laughs> Lily is dead. <laughs> Lily's dead? <laughs> Wait, what? What? Do you not remember at the Shrine of Night? 
All you care about is fame. You want the world to think you're so special. <laughs> what? And for some reason, she's saying it's our fault. Rewind. Here's what happened. Back when Lily and I confronted Professor Bree on the snowy Mount Maycrop, his genesect had us paralyzed. When Vanilla showed up to help us, I was pressing A through the dialogue, and apparently frame one skipped through a choice to either help Vanilla or help Lily. Without realizing it, I chose to help Vanilla. Really, it was actually a single frame. I've gone over the footage like 10 times. And it kind of feels like we got the short end of the stick here. Because instead of having what could have been Pokemon Batman on our team, we got Vanilla. So part of me understands why Ivy's upset, but losing to me in a Pokemon battle isn't gonna bring her back. Kinda feels like you should be more mad at Professor Bree for killing Lily than you should be at me for not being able to save her. Especially now that we're meeting up with Vanilla to discover who the true leader of Team Croct is. Since it seems Bree is just a puppet. Hold on to your chairs. The true villain of Pokemon Myth is Marcus. So this is confusing, so let me break down the story for you. From the very start of this game, since we met Marcus in our starting town, he has been evil and the mastermind. When he bumped into us, he decided seemingly on a whim, hey, why not go on a Pokemon journey and just mess with this kid? Since then, he has been toying with us every rival battle, bragging about his shiny Pokemon, annoying us at every single town and gym, has all been a cat and mouse game to make sure Team Corrupt was always one step ahead of us. Which is like, literally, psychopath behavior, man. He's also confident enough to challenge both Hope and I to a double battle. Probably because he has a team built by a 12 year old. This bastard went to the Pokemon and picked up a box of oops all legendary cereal, PS Dialga, Palkia, Garantina, Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres. Why the hell did Team Corrupt need the myth and legendaries? They already have control over time and space. More than that, when we do kick his ass, cause double battles are a free pass, he pulls the psych, I actually have one more our Pokemon and it's god damn Arceus. It feels like Marcus is the main character of a completely different story because he has the power of god and anime on his side. While Arceus is the literal god of the Pokemon universe, what is a god to a Sunflora? Mist the mighty does not quiver even before the might of all powerful gods. Instead, he uses Giga Drain, absorbing Arceus's very essence into his own for a midday snack. Marcus had lost. His whole plan was now in shambles. Team Corrupt has dispersed. And now he, oh, wait, we're not gonna arrest him, Vanilla? No? Well, he showed us where the legendary Pokemon were, so it's all fine and equal. Didn't, didn't like Lily die and stuff? Oh, but he released the Pokemon, so you know, no harm, no foul. Vanilla is quickly moving away from gross incompetence into like single digit IQ range. Now, I actually feel like I need to become the champion now for the safety of this region, just so she's not in charge. And that's our next goal. With God dead and missed in his place, we set our sights on finally doing what we came to do, gym number seven. This one is full of fighting types, and we were in for a bit of a surprise. Gym numero seven. Uh, hey buddy, you forgot to tell me what type is Mari. Okay, you are immediately switching legendary Pokemons in to start the battle. It destroys our initial plan, which to be fair is just using our flying type Pokemon Pox to sweep, so we have to adapt. Kyle is able to power up Punch through Kabali, and in between the extra attack boost and their ghost type, nullifying most fighting types, it's time for another Kyle sweep, and through their own Mega Lucario, which isn't able to do anything. Ooh. And that leaves one gym left. Now, I do want to mention that Pokemon Myth has so much content and plot that I'm not able to include it all in this video. I'm cutting out an entire side section here where we finally get to see 
Team Astra return, make up with Ivy and even meet Cynthia, but I don't want to spoil it all in this video because I think you should all go and play Pokemon Myth yourselves because the developers have been really sweet to me and were even in my chat while I was playing the game, so give them all of your love. They've also announced that there's going to be a lot of continuations of this game and the island sets that all up for the future, so go check it out yourself. Right now, my focus is on becoming the Pokemon League champ, and that means heading to gym number 8. But not without a power-up, because while our current lineup of 6 Pokemon is stellar, our Larvesta Luna is finally ready to evolve into this gorgeous, shiny, psychic, fairy Volcarona, which is the perfect Pokemon to take on our final gym, Dark Types. Or it would have been if we didn't immediately fight a goddamn Tyranitar. We'd win the battle eventually, but hoo boy, I had to get Luna out of there. Pox Flamethrower is a Bisharp and Kyle Earthquakes Incineroar before we have to deal with frickin' Spiritomb. I was hoping Luna could squeeze a W out, but it was a bit too much to deal with, so instead we have to press our instant wind button. It's time for the GOAT. You know? What's that gonna do? Yeah, oh no, you made us flinch? You're gonna die. They were so afraid of mist, they just offed on themselves. Their next two Pokemon were a Mega Houndoom and a Crocodile, but we've been saving our powerful water and ground types, so it wasn't too much work. Just like that, we have all eight gym badges, and it's time for the Elite Four. This was our gauntlet, but we had a goal. Remove the fraud vanilla from our throne and place ourselves or more realistically, our true idol Mist as the champion of the Mythen region. We can't rest easy knowing that frickin' Vanilla is in charge of protecting our loved ones. The Elite Four actually live up to their names. They are the toughest trainers we've had to fight so far, each battle pushing us to our limits. A double battle where they have Zacian and Zamazenta? Okay, sure, a shiny Empoleon. Why not? I hate those. Galarian Moltres? followed by Mew, followed by Mega Ampharos. Sure, that fits. Also, random twist, Hope, our rival is an Elite Four member. It makes sense since she's really the only rival that actually contributed to taking down Team Corrupt, but we beat her easily for the millionth time over. I'll be sure to keep her around though when I'm in charge, especially since she has a juiced up Lunala. Final Elite Four member has an entire goddamn team of shiny Pokemon, which it's not that hard to beat, but I'm not gonna lie, is a pretty cool flex. But luckily, I have experience in this field. I've killed a lot of shinies, Chet. You're gonna have to be more specific. And let me tell you, I'm about to kill a lot more. Kyle, it's time to mega evolve. Not even their Marshadow or a mega goddamn Arcanine are enough to stop me, baby, because it's time for our final battle, Vanilla. She tells us that for coming this far, she's proud of us. We tell her she's bad at her job. She tells us that for the, our final battle, she won't hold back. We tell her she's bad at her job. And she tells us she wants to thank us for saving this region. We ask if she can hurry things up because we have to clean up her mess. The battle begins. Mine's bigger! <laughs> What the fuck is that? Oh, that's the legendary Pokemon she caught, goddammit! No, JB! Oh, never mind, it didn't really matter. The championship will be ours! You may have this dragon type Eevee. We have a mist. Fuck. One Pokemon to one. What? Ah! And just like that, we have defeated the champion. Pokemon myth is ours. And just like that, we have beaten Pokemon myth or at least the first part of Pokemon Myth that is currently out. And what a crazy experience this game was. It was full of twists, new Pokemons, and new forms, 
Personally, my favorite is probably going to be Kyle, even though Sunflora and Sunkern kind of highlighted our playthrough, this Mega Ghost and Grand Lucario was probably my favorite. I highly encourage you all to play the game for yourself since, once again, I had to cut a lot of content out to make the video straightforward, but let me know. What fan game should I play next? Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment, and make sure to have a damn good day.